I've been married for 40 years. If anyone asks me about my wife's shortcomings or flaws, I say she hasn't any. What's the emotion you find hardest to express? The love to the Prophet because you just can't control your emotions when you talk about him. My life is my life. Don't look at me as a celebrity. You mentioned that you go to the gym often and we all know about the, the viral picture and your reply to it. Uh, so <laughs> Are you still gymming daily? I do gym four to five times, times a week. week. My father died when I was like 14 years of age, 15 years of age. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to episode 358 of Freshly Grounded. This episode is brought to you by Train With Gaff. A lot of us struggle with nutrition. I know that's the case for me. And if that sounds like you, if you've tried different diets, different ways to tweak what you eat, how you eat, and it's hard to sustain, or it's not really working out, or there's just so much information, then this is for you. I've known of Gaff for many years now and I've been following his work for what feels like yonks, many years. And I've seen a lot of the results that he's posted through his years of coaching and personal training. And now you guys can access it for completely free, by the way. Gaff, through his brand, Train With Gaff, basically helps people to lose weight and get in shape. He's had clients who have been going to the gym for oh, five, 10 years and can't get their nutrition right. And within 12 weeks, his clients lose an average of 10 to 12 kilos. And so while Gaff is a personal trainer and a coach, he's also first and foremost a Muslim. And so he understands the nuances and the importance of keeping everything in our life balanced, ensuring that we prioritize our deen, ensuring that we stay fit and healthy, and that the mind is also always in the right space. And so as I say, Gaff has now put together a welcome pack, a document that outlines the key nutritional information that's helped his clients lose weight. And so while Gaff's one-on-one -on -one coaching is obviously exclusively for males because it's such an intimate relationship you have to have when you're working with a personal trainer this welcome pack is available to everyone and is applicable to everyone so to get your hands on the free welcome pack just head over to freshlygrounded.com slash gaff that's freshlygrounded.com slash g-a-f-f and get your hands on the key nutritional information we need as muslims to make sure that we stay healthy and fit and with that being said Let's get into this very exciting episode of Freshly Grounded with Sheikh Asim Al Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair for giving me your time. Barakallahu feekum for having me. Talk about time. How do you manage your time, Sheikh? Because I, the, the output that you have, Allah Mubarak is amazing. It, it, there's constantly, whether it, if it's not Twitter or YouTube, Instagram, there's always something coming out uh, in regards to your answers. I know that you recently kind of mentioned that there's some volunteer sisters, may Allah bless them, who you've never met, who have like taken on board kind of the YouTube and the Instagram and you kind of focus on the Twitter. But still, it seems like you have a, a, a an amazing system running around you so that you can constantly output at that level. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa min ihtada bi hudahu amma ba'd. I'd be lying if I said that, well, I manage my time by putting a plan and a strategy and all of this baloney is, is not true. I do not manage time. It is Allah who puts barakah in your time. And I'm always feeling that I'm not doing enough, first of all. Second of all, what I do is not something that I could brag about and say that I'm doing it and I'm prioritizing thing and I'm putting things in perspective and this and that. Again, this is not true. Whatever comes, I do it. And I do have a lot of spare time on my plate that you'll be surprised, but people don't know this. And it makes me feel really tiny and small when I compare myself and my spare time to real scholars who devoted their lives and times and wealth and health for the sake of Allah. Seriously, I'm not saying this out of being humble. I'm the last one to be humble, seriously, because I brag a lot and I know what to brag about. And I know that a lot of people are nothing compared to me. But when push comes to shove, I know that I'll be held accountable in, on the Day of Judgment big time for the time I've been wasting and comparing my blessings and favors that Allah has bestowed upon me to real scholars, I think I'm doomed. Nevertheless, 
I have great hope in Allah Azza wa Jal and in His forgiveness and in His mercy that I managed to get by, but I don't plan anything. If people come and invite me to a conference on XYZ month, I said, this is too late. Call me two weeks. Okay. Because I do not know how to plan more than that. I don't know what comes up. You don't use any calendar apps? Nothing, nothing. So you tell me, we want you in August. I said, call me two weeks before August. Oh, we have to organize it till now. I don't have anything. I don't know what's going to come up. So call me two weeks before the actual event because I don't plan anything ahead of time. And what about your phone? Are you good? Uh, do you, how do you mind your relationship with your phone in terms of, because uh, I know a lot of your communication is done o over email. So do, is that, are you, do you purposely try and distance yourself from anybody like having people from a lot of people having your number and access to WhatsApp and things like this? I pride myself to answer any caller any time of the day and night when I'm free. And like three, four years ago, that was 23 hours a day. The phone was always on. I have only one number. And if I'm eating, if I'm uh, working out in the gym, if I am driving, I'm always on. I answer people to the extent that my family may feel irritated and come on, we're sitting with you. I said, okay, it's only a minute or two. It's, it, I don't take long calls where people vent. But I was going to say, how do you make sure people don't take the mic? Because first of all, I give each caller one call a day and it must not exceed four to five minutes. And I have a good memory in who called and I can remember voices. So if someone calls twice a day, I say, listen, next time you do it, I'm going to block your number. And I have hundreds of numbers blocked. So usually, like we're having this conversation, my phone is on do not disturb. So you call, you'll find that it's giving you a busy tone. But if I don't have counseling sessions, if I'm not doing anything of importance, it's always on. Okay. Alhamdulillah. That you you mentioned there that you you you're comparing your time to the time to to the time that um, some other scholars. Uh, I've had there's this thought that I've had actually a lot, which is that. Um, Sometimes what goes through my mind when I think about my time and how I'm using it and, and kind of similar to kind of what you were saying, but on a much worse scale, um, I often think about this, this, this thought came into my mind a couple of years ago and I haven't been able to shake it off since I've, since I had it and I regularly think about it. And the thought is, is essentially that we have the same Lord as I have the same Lord as the scholars will be questioned by the same Lord and I have got the same 24 hours in a day. And so sometimes I would limit myself and think, oh, if I can achieve this in my lifetime to do with the Dean, um, if I could achieve X in my lifetime, uh, let me just try and get to that. Um, and then I remember that um, there's scholars who have done so much, um, memorized like new libraries of books, um, implemented uh, and taught uh, many people. And then I, I think to myself, Actually, considering we have the same, I'm going to be. Uh, there's not going to be. I will be like a separate Lord answer, answering, uh, asking questions to the scholars, and then a separate for me. So, if that's the case, um, I should actually have that um, aspiration of actually trying to achieve that. And so, a question I actually had for you, noted down for later in the podcast, but I'll ask it now because we spoke about it, is. I just showed you Tartil, right? And uh, through the work that I do with Tartil, uh, we hear from a lot of Hufad, especially on like we have this podcast, this podcast where Hufad call in. And a lot of the Hufas, we ask them, like, what was your hith journey like? And a lot of them say, well, my, my mum started me on my hith journey when I was five or four. And I memorized the Quran when I, by the time I was 12, 15, 20. You very rarely hear somebody say, I started at 30 and I, you know, memorized by 35 or 40. So for people who are later on in life, maybe they're in their 30s now or 40s, um, and they haven't necessarily started memorizing or they haven't, they're not even a half year, that what, how would you motivate them? What positive thing can we explain to them that helps them feel that they can still aspire to be on to try and become a scholar for example first of all you know that i do counseling sessions yes uh, yes get paid for that yes I do this is that. what i've seen the website yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is what what puts the bread on the table with the grace of allah Azzawajal. i sit with a lot of couples who may vent to me and complain that the kids are not doing enough in Hifz Quran and they're trying to beat them up, trying to motivate them, try to. And I said to him, listen, we cannot have clones 
of scholars. Otherwise, if everyone was a scholar, nobody would drive the bus, nobody would collect the garbage, nobody would administer um, this or that, or be in finance, or be a doctor, or be an engineer. Therefore, each one is designated to what Allah Azza wa had made him capable of, and he can be the best in what he does, not necessarily memorize the Quran. There are many scholars that I can name who had zero impact on their people and their community that I or others may think of us, of ourselves, to be better to the community than them because we managed to change so many people's lives with the grace of Allah. What we don't know is that we thrived on their books and we've learned from them what enabled us to impact others. So they're getting rewarded even if they did not have the impact we have on communities and societies and those close to us. So each one is created and facilitated to what Allah Azza wa Jal has preordained for him. The hadith of the Prophet والسلام, praising those in the Muslim army, saying Tuba for a soldier of Allah Azza wa Jal in the army. If they put him in up front to fight the enemies, he's fine. If they put him, the leadership, at the back doing nothing but to collect leftovers of the army, what, they fe what, what things that was lost, or to find those who were left behind and cater for them. It's not a fighting position. Tawbah for him, so good for him. So this hadith shows us that if you have the sincerity, you don't have to be a hafiz. You don't have to be an orator or a da'i. We can't be cloned of one another. We all can't be Dr. Zakir Naik, knowing the surah, knowing the ayah, having the ability to counter atheists and uh, uh, other faiths with confidence and knowledge, mashallah. We can't be like this. We need different people in different positions. Therefore, look at your son, look at your daughter, look at their potentials, and invest in what they love and like so that they excel in what they do. Of course, there are red lines we don't cra cross. So prayer on time, doing your rosa or, um, or fasting, as you guys say, and, and the likes. Okay, this is the basics. The more you can do is good, but don't make that a breaking point that may let, let them feel uh, despair and say, the heck with it. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the whole thing, the whole wagon and jumping out of it. No. Give them motivation, look what they can really um, perform in and try to balance. I don't know if this sounds logical or... No, no, it makes a lot of sense uh, because yeah, like, you, like you've already kind of mentioned, we all have different skills and assets and, and, and different things we can bring to the Ummah, right? Um, so it makes a lot of sense what you're saying and it adds a kind of another layer of thought to it. Um, I actually wanted to, uh, to start the podcast uh, in a bit of a different way uh, initially, but I wanted to ask you about it. I ended up asking you about your time. So uh, we'll, we'll go to that now. So we have this, um, we create these conversation cards at Freshly Grounded. It's uh, We just called it the Freshly Grounded game. Yeah, and so you've actually got a pack uh, there for you to take home as well. So I've, I've, I've picked out some questions from, from the game uh, that I want to ask you. Answer them as short or as, uh, as long as you'd like. Um, it's meant to be fairly quick. Uh, but I thought it would help break some of the ice, considering this the first time we've ever met it is happening on camera, so it's a, a bit harder to break the ice, right? So I'm, I'm relying on the game for this one. So, um, so we'll go with this one first. Uh, when was the last time that you decluttered, decluttered your life? I, de I did what? You decluttered your life. What, what is that? You removed things from your life, whether it be from mental space or just had a clear out of your house, or you decluttered, you minimized, you removed things. I don't have anything as such with the grace of Allah. I live in the bare minimum. I don't have anything that clogs my system, not even in home. I don't buy things and just look at them or I have problems in my life that I have to remove. I'm a very simple day-to-day -day person. I don't plan for the future. I'm just waiting for my SMS to answer my Lord and die. And I enjoy day-to-day -day life. I go to the gym. I enjoy sitting with my kids, my grandkids. There's nothing that makes me mm. I can't get 
sleep at night. Yes. I just turn off this, the switch and sh- Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Do you think that's something that's um, uh, that you've been blessed with, though? This the, like kind of like thick skin or the ability to switch off? Because some people are quite sensitive um, to if things happen around them and then can easily lose sleep. I believe I am quite blessed by Allah in every single aspect of life. Yeah, and seriously, if you say to me, Sheikh, are you a millionaire? I said no. A thousand years? Said no. I I I don't have a, a a house. I don't have a property. I have, don't have plots. I pay rent for two houses. I've been doing this all of my life. I don't have any investments. I live day to day, a very lavish life with the grace of Allah. My kids never miss anything, but I'm blessed in every single aspect. Maybe this is due to that Allah has blessed me to have trust on him. So. Even if the worst thing happens, immediately I just snap out of it and say, it was preordained 50,000 years before Allah created the universe. Nothing I could have done to change it. Salavi, move on. Yes, but he did this to you. They did that to you. You've lost your job. You've lo- So what? Allah preordained it. What can you do? If my son dies, I don't have uh, uh, sons, alhamdulillah. They're all daughters. I have only sons. Alhamdulillah. So if my son dies, I have one of two choices. Bang your head against the wall, cry, weep, tear your your clothes and complain. My son is not going to come back to life. Or I can be patient, saddened, may cry a little bit, but be content. My son is not going to come back to life again. The difference is the reward at the side of Allah. So might as well be content. Next question. Do you find it easy to apologize? Very. Did you? Yeah. But alhamdulillah, um, 95% of the time you're right. I, I, it's not I'm right. I'm very aware of people's uh, feelings. So I try my level best not to uh, offend them unless I'm doing it willingly. And in 99.9%, I do it willingly. Meaning, the guy is OCD. Fine, so you have to. I, I have, have to step on his stomach. Yes, and jump, jump, jump until he vomits. Yeah. People around me say, hey, "This is too harsh. This is none of your business." He's my uh, patient. I know I'm doing it, and the people that come to me with the grace of Allah know that I don't have any beef with them. I don't have any hidden agenda. I don't want to show that I am better than I am. I am better than them. <laughs> Sue me. <laughs> what am I gonna do? They know that Sheikh Hasim wants the best to us and he's treating us as a father, as a friend, as a counselor. So whatever he says, he does not intend to degrade us or to put us down. That's interesting. I want to touch a bit more on that later. Uh, Tell me something about your father that you didn't appreciate until you became older. My father died when I was like 14 years of age, 15 years of age. So that was almost almost, uh, a lot. And he... A long time ago, almost 50 years ago. And I have very little recollection of him. And what I know is that I never shared any feelings with to him or with him. This is how he was. He was excellent with everybody else. With friends, very sociable, very well known in the community. He was an editor of two newspapers in Arabic and in English. So he was multilingual and everybody loved him. I rarely saw him. So I have no emotions in the sense that hugging, kissing and the likes. And this cascaded to me, not being able to show such feelings to my kids in the sense of they desire me hugging them. But no, dad, why are you hugging us? I don't know. That it's not me. I try to force myself to do this and kiss them and to, you know, cuddle them and 
Well, often what um, psychologists say about uh, about that is that if that's not the way you show love, that's probably because that's not the way you receive love. So if, for example, your daughters give you a cuddle, not to say that you don't receive that as a form of love, but as in there might be something else that you really appreciate um, that someone does for you and that's how you receive that love. And so um, you, know, you feel love when somebody does that for you. Uh, so like that could be, for example, that somebody... Um, it does an act of service, like make sure that you're well and that you're, you're fed and stuff like that. I always, you know, the thing is, I, I always gaslight them. Okay. And when they say, well, you don't hug us, why don't you hug us like we hug you? Give us some affection. I said, yeah, because I don't love you. You know, I don't uh, care for you. And start defending me. No, you give us this, you give us that. I said, mm, okay, you can continue. So, ah. Uh, what do you think the thing is for you? Though? How do you receive love? That way, what, what would somebody do that makes you feel loved? If it's not hugs and like affection in that sense, like physical affection. So could it be gifts, acts of service, um, somebody being an opening? I, with the grace of Allah. No, no. With the grace of Allah, I never, ever expect things from others. Okay. So my, whatever my wife does, whatever my kids do or my grandchildren do, I appreciate it. Whether it's a an expression of love or they're just doing it because it's their duty. I appreciate that big time. And I never show them that I'm missing something or you guys didn't call me, you didn't come to visit, you don't give me gifts, you don't send me flowers. And if they do, alhamdulillah, if they don't, I'm fine. But I love them and I express my love through giving them gifts, trying to do things to them. They understand and they know. But you know, people are greedy, they want the extra edge. Yeah, it sounds like you're good at um, overlooking, uh, which is a very, very important part of our faith. I do, right? I do overlook mis people's mistakes. I, I pretend not to have seen them. So this is what I say to people. I've been married for 40 years. If anyone asks me about my wife's shortcomings or flaws, I say she hasn't any. She doesn't have any. She's perfect. Of course she's not. If I were to think about it, maybe I would have come up with 100. And if she were to be asked, she would say the same. He doesn't have any. He's the perfect husband. But I know my shortcomings uh, and flaws. This is content. Mm -hmm. We are the happiest couple because we love one another with the grace of Allah. And it, our relationship is based on respect. It's based on compassion and trying not to be selfish, to do whatever you can. Yes, maybe I don't buy her red roses. I don't take her to a, a dinner at, at restaurants and 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 then do things uh, as, as such. But she knows that no one loves his wife more than I do, and I know that no one loves her husband more than she does. It's interesting that you said that you are kind of selfless in that manner. Um, we had Sheikh Mohammed Tim Humble on the podcast. Um, some time back and he said something that stuck with me to this day he said that um, if a husband and really he's he said this is beneficial for any relationship but if a husband is constantly he said what we find often in relationships is that a person is trying to get his rights and she is trying to get her rights and he said if you're both concerned with each other's rights and not of yours that's the best type of relationship and actually you both get your right get given your rights in that process as well so true Kind of, um, yeah, beneficial. Jazakallah khair. Okay, um, who do you appreciate more as you get older? Definitely Allah Azza wa Jal for all what he has bestowed upon me. I can't appreciate him enough or thank him or show my gratitude to him. As for humans, my wife is my rock. So I do appreciate everything she does for me and for the kids and how tolerant she is. You're good, you're, you're good. You're good at this, Sheikh. Um, one of Allah's names is your protecting friend, or translates to your protecting friend, Al-Wali. Name a time in your life where you felt that name in existence. Every time, 24, 24 hours, hours, seven days a week. Name one thing you love about the way you've been raised. Allah Azza wa Jal raised me, and no one else, seriously. Nobody sat with me, reprimanded me, guided me, told me, scolded me. It's Allah Azza wa Jal that has blessed me of being able to diagnose, analyze, uh, trial and error, 
and and fix things in myself to become who I am with the grace of Allah. No, no one has any, <laughs> alhamdulillah, yeah, any white hands on me except Allah. SubhanAllah. Um, describe your ultimate cheat meal. My? Ultimate cheat meal. Cheat meal? Yeah. I don't, uh, um, I'm not faithful in any meals. I always cheat. Well, you are a long better if you mention that you go to the gym often and uh, uh, we all know about the the viral picture and your reply to it. Uh, so, <laughs> so um, then you must be on diet, Sheikh. Let's be honest. You don't. You didn't. You don't follow me. I eat pizzas. I eat cheeseburgers. I adore steaks, uh, shawarmas, all the time. It sweet stuff, sweet stuff. Um, before I became diabetic, yes. But now, Alhamdulillah, I'm. Yani, I'm. I'm way down. I used to t- take like two or three bars of chocolate, you know, Mars Galaxy with hazelnut or uh, uh, the likes every single day. And I used to eat like three cheeseburgers with a, a liter of da- uh, of Coke or of Pepsi in one meal. And then hit the gym for four hours. You know what? Okay, for four, four hours. Four to five hours. <laughs> but now I can barely finish one. Are you still gymming daily? Are you gymming daily? When when I had a, a meal. Uh, no, but now, now do you gym daily? I do gym four to five times, times a week. week. Okay. And and morning, morning, evening? No, morning. I'm, I'm a morning person. I'm a morning evening, person too. Evening. evening yeah, and after Asr, khalas, it's, uh, it's done. I'm Shekhan, home. I don't function after 8.30 p.m. I like to be in bed at 9. After Isha, I don't leave home. Yeah. But I, I do a lot of things until 1 o'clock a.m. Oh, really? Yeah. I couldn't. So I... I, I my my sleeping pattern is three hours, then I have to wake up. Okay. I can't go for more than max four hours a day. Okay. So I have to wake up, sit for two, three hours, then go back to sleep for an hour or so, and then do things for five, six hours and go. So it's, it's, it's a very weird, awkward, uh, for a retired person, it's just fine. Do you, do you set alarms? Uh, only for uh, before Fajr. Okay. That's it. Have you got any, uh, 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 some people, uh, my, my technique for my alarm setting is that I set the alarm uh, for Fajr in the other room. So my, I have my house, my office is inside my house. And so my room, my alarm is in my office. And so I have to walk like, like no, 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 office. Alhamdulillah, I don't even yeah. snooze my yeah, alarm. No, that the, worries me. Yeah, the moment I, it, it rings, I'm, I'm awake. Alhamdulillah. Uh, okay, so I'll be able to check you out. Tell me an Islamic reminder you once heard that has stayed with you to this day. I'm not good at this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I name. Mean, okay, and something one that comes to mind right now. Everything I I say is uh, are gyms. So I was kidding for now. Uh, what's the emotion you find hardest to express? This is this is, question was made for you, Shit. What's the emotion you find hardest to express? The love to the of of to the Prophet Alaihissalam, because you just can't control your emotions. When you talk about him, the love we have for our Prophet the amount of attack, the deviant sects, and those who accuse us of hating him and not loving his sunnah, despite the decades we've been trying our level best to call people to the sunnah and to love the Prophet and to hold him in a great high uh, uh, place to their hearts, yet they still accuse us that we don't love the Prophet This is an emotion that you just feel the, the love and that you would do anything to see him and to meet him and to be with him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What's your favorite struggle? It's not my favorite, but it's my struggle with my... Uh, own fitness and my own self. I like to uh, challenge myself. So if I lose in a game, I'm very competitive. Oh, really? I enjoy it. What, what sports do you play? Is, um, now. Are you into paddle? No, 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 no. Really? I have two surgeries in both knees. Okay. So I I have one tournament with the grace of Allah in squash. In, you won uh, tournaments? Yeah, yeah. I used to be very competitive. I have won tournaments in table tennis professionally. Amazing. And badminton I, in the 90s, I was very good, but then I torn a cartilage 
in one of the matches uh, in that, and, st and I stopped since then. But I was very, very good and competitive in, in badminton. And yeah, I enjoy enjoy these games. So your injuries from your sports? Yes. Oh. Okay. Well, I, I, I think people don't necessarily um, know that you're so into sport, would they? Well, as was before the viral hit. None of their business. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's not exactly as well. You said no. See, this is this is what I'm trying to tell people. Achi, our lives is ours. And if I hit the gym, if I have a good symmetric body, alhamdulillah, this is for my wife. Why should I tell people about my own personal life? Why should I tell people, oh, I went to this restaurant and I had this fettuccine and I had the, I spoke with Sheikh so-and-so and look at the sunrise or the sunset. And I, I, I don't do these things because what counts is what gets you closer to Allah. My life is my life. Okay, don't I want to brag about the things in my life? Believe me, if I do, people would be totally shocked. I don't because I don't want them to be shocked or to praise me or to say, oh, I didn't know you did this or did that because this is my life. It doesn't matter to you. Don't look at me as a celebrity. Learn from what I teach you that gets you closer to Allah. And if I make a mistake, avoid that. My personal life, what I do in my hobbies, my background, my past, this is my business. Simple as that. I like that. Okay, uh, so on that note, actually, what does a perfect night in look like to you? Every night. Same old same. I, I, I wouldn't say that, oh, that was a memorable night. Everything, alhamdulillah, is fine. I have a good meal with my wife and kids, and then I retire to do my questions on the website, on my website uh, Q&A, and then I just do whatever needed if I have recording or I record something for Zad Academy or to prepare some questions for my programs or if I have uh, um, lectures that I'd like to uh, prepare. If not, I just, you know, play around. Okay, last three from the game. Uh, when I think of meeting Allah, I feel happy. Alhamdulillah. I, I'm, I don't know if this is something I should be worried about. You know, when you hear the stories of the Salaf being terrified of dying and meeting their sins and I I don't know maybe this is shaitan maybe this is overconfidence but I do feel happy I do feel satisfied I do believe in Allah's beautiful names the most forgiving the most merciful the one who guides people to repent and accept their repentance so he's a tawwab al-rahim al-ghaffar al-latif when you explain these names to people and you have strong conviction in them, you deal with Allah differently. Yes, I do acknowledge I have sins like big time. And I'm in real deep trouble if Allah does not forgive them. But I still have hope that maybe somewhere in this world, one person would have benefited from something I said and raises his hands in the one last third of the night and says, Oh Allah, forgive Sheikh Asim's sins. And Allah accepts. Just interrupting the podcast for a second uh, to let you guys know about the game that you just watched uh, myself and Sheikh Asim play. Uh, it's called The Game uh, by Freshly Grounded. And it's a pack of 100 conversation cards for you to open up and to interact with friends, with family, with loved ones, with your spouse, with your children, with your parents. Uh, it's got 100 questions. There's so many questions in here. You'll never get, I guarantee you, you'll start having such deep conversations. There'll be tears, there'll be laughter that you won't get through more than five cards uh, at a session. Uh, so it's literally, you can play this unlimited amount of times and every time you play it, you get different answers. Uh, it's something that we're really proud of at Freshly Grounded. We've, the game, we've been selling the game now for, maybe four years, um, that's a guess, uh, but it's uh, been played by over 10,000 people and I think you will love it. So to grab the game, head over to shop.freshlygrounded.com. That's shop.freshlygrounded.com. And let's get back to the episode. 
Okay, so that's enough for the game. Let's go on to a topic that I know you've been asked a lot about this, so forgive me for asking repetitive questions. I know you're recently on another podcast as well. But um, I think like in the last kind of um, couple of years, there's been a huge kind of growth in terms of the awareness uh, of yourself from people because of um, the questions kind of being, a lot of the questions going viral and stuff like that. Um and, and a lot of it is focused on also, um, no, first of all, like a huge, um, a, a huge part of it is the benefit that you give. And f- personally, I want to t- say Jazakallah khair. I have a, uh, I only have one WhatsApp group with the brothers uh, that I'm in, there's four of us. Uh, and we're always kind of sharing the benefit and having a laugh and stuff like that. And often um, your videos are, uh, and, and images are shared in that. So Jazakallah khair for the immense benefit that you that you continue to provide. And I don't want to belittle that, actually. It's important that we don't, because often when people talk about the answers that you give and stuff like that, I think there's this kind of underly- underlaying of almost ignoring the benefit. Um, however, um, I think for good reason, a lot of it has gone viral. Um, and so people have been able to benefit more, but a lot of it has gone viral because people enjoy the res- types of responses that you give. T- to what extent do you think about... Um, the answer and how it's going to be if it's does that does that take a, a toll and you think about the criticism do you think are people going to think that i'm too harsh or too uh, funny or do you just put the answer out how you want to put the answer out again i don't sit and reflect on what i'm gonna say in the sense that i'm not a rapper and i'm not a stand-up comedian who sits and has a notepad and writing down what his strategy is going to be, what is his pitch, and, you know, try to put scenarios so that whenever a, a, a thing like that happens, he has a response. No, it, come on, this is too much. It just comes uh, uh, spontaneously. And I do have to admit, so many times I write the answer on Twitter because Twitter is on the spot. And Twitter, and Twitter you control. Yes. And Twitter is on the spot. It's not something that you read and you prepare. So you just write an answer. So many times I delete. So, whoops, no, I'm not ready for people misunderstanding it or saying, oh, this is... But the vast majority of my answers, whether on TV, whether on lectures, whether on Twitter or on my website, I just do it and like Nike, just do it. Mm. So I don't think of the consequences because with the grace of Allah, most of my responses are quite sensible measured. So I have like uh, boundaries that I I may not cross because it shouldn't be crossed by Allah Azza wa Jal. Alhamdulillah, Allah has favored me to do this. So yeah, I just say it. You like it, good for you. You don't like it, tough bananas. Who cares? Are you aware, though, that you have a good sense of humor? Of course. You know that? Yeah. Thanks. I've been always, <laughs> I've been uh, praised for this, especially with my daughters. I mean, they just sit and laugh their heads off. And I sit with their mom, and I make fun of her like crazy. And they, you know, their eyes tears because of, of, of the fun I make. Of course, I do 50% making fun, 50% uh, praising and love words that makes uh, yeah, any metal melt. But in the, in they say, come on, you're even bipolar. What, what is this? We, we're almost in a, in a borderline personality. You, you, you're, you're mixing our emotions up. That's what I do. So yeah, alhamdulillah. But again, this is how I roll with my congregation, in the masjid, in the streets, with my relatives, with my friends. I'm not going to pretend that, mm, yes, I am a sheikh. No, this is haram. No, you should be serious. No, you. I, this is not what I do. You guys don't like this, you know, among the serious students of knowledge? Sue me. I don't care. I didn't ask people to put me up front or to ask me questions. You don't like what like what what I say? Unfollow. So many people you could follow. The no 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 you it's not befitting of a sheikh. Who told you I'm a sheikh? I'm your normal GI Joe. <laughs> so live with it. 
that you, you you mentioned that you've done a lot of uh, that you do consultations. Um, within the consultations, what are some of the common themes that come up? Uh, I have some in mind that I would think come up, but I'm intrigued to know if that's true or not, and if there's some kind of anomalies in that that you've even been surprised that come up. So the things that come to mind for me are things like um, marriage related issues. 30 percent. Okay, uh, I'd imagine pornography. Te- five, five to ten percent. Okay, I would imagine Oriba and what Five to ten percent. Okay, so that leaves sixty percent. OCD. Really? Oh, Wiswas is killing the people. Really? Shaitan, and this is why, yeah, yani, I have huge beef with Shaitan, because people go to psychiatrists. And they spent thousands of dollars, session after session, and, hmm, tell me about your childhood. And they listen. Okay, our thumbs is up. We need uh, like uh, 10 more sessions to get this ongoing with the pipe in his, his, his mouth. And, and, and you've got to pay his amount uh, 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 ahead of time. No, we're very descriptive. Sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the guys keep on going and going. Then it's good. Tell me about your abuse when you were young and, and, and child. Eh? And you talk, talk, and there's not a benefit. Okay, take Brozac. T- take this. Take. With the grace of Allah, they come to me and I said, and I interrupt them. I don't let them vent. Sheikh, I have this. It would. I know. I'd like to continue. So no, you come to me to find a solution, not to vent. I know your problem. Why are you repeating it? Listen to me for nine minutes, and then you can have the floor. And I pride myself with the grace of Allah that thirty minutes is enough. If you come to me, I feel insulted. And with the grace of Allah, ninety to ninety-five percent don't come back. And I get emails saying, Zakallah khair, totally fixed. I have no problems. Some people come to me after six, seven months saying, Sheikh, uh, totally different. You know, the wuswas I had with purity, it's all gone. I have another wuswas with divorce, with kufr. With, and I know exactly how shaitan works. So it's, it's, I'm, I have never studied psychology in my life. I don't have knowledge in it, but I know how shaitan works. So I can speak to people with the experience that Allah have graced me with, and I can tell from the first 60 seconds, what's your problem? So what are the common types of OCD that you get most uh, purity, kufr, dementia? Purity, repeating words in salat, thinking that you've committed an act of kufr, saying the shahada 50 times a day, thinking everything is impure around you, think, and some of them, for example, this is like 10, 15%, thinking that every word you say is divorce. And I have like 20% of those who come to me thinking that the marriage is invalid. So I was engaged in this kind of relationship before marriage. No sex, nothing. I knew someone. I was with a guy and we were chatting on the phone and he said, marry yourself to me. And I said, I give you myself in marriage. And we laughed about it and he accepted. So are we married? because I married 10 years ago, uh, later, and I have six kids, and now I'm getting these thoughts that my marriage is invalid and my children are born out of wedlock. She's crying, she's weeping. Someone coming to me saying, Sheikh, I said to my wife, Lulu, and I thought that maybe Lulu in Zimbabwe means I divorce you. So now I can't think of myself, and they're crying to me. So, uh, with the grace of Allah, Okay, so Sheikh, I know people who also um, had many questions about um, OCD and stuff. And earlier I mentioned Sheikh Muhammad Tim, and he deals with a lot of. He kind of like focuses on Rukia and stuff like that. Um, you you said thirty minutes, and they don't come back. So I'm intrigued. Uh, you've dangled the carrot. Um, if somebody comes to you and says they have an issue with uh, you know purity, they can have I made with all the correct way and so on and so forth. Um, from a general point of view, because obviously you're dealing with people directly, uh, and so you get a bit more context. What are the kind of things that you're talking about and explaining to help? Is it like uh, 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 Rukia and then some practical no, steps? No, 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 no Rukia at all. Okay. So what are the, so I, so it's more practical. It's, see, I'm an eye opener. Sure. So I just ask the per- person, he says, I spent half an hour doing wudu. Okay. So, okay, mashallah, you're good. You're very clean. How much water do you use? So, oh, gallons. So, good. Mm, very good. How much water did the Prophet Al-Sasam use? He said, one mood. 
approximately 0.7 liter, a small bottle of water. I said, mm, good. Are you more righteous and knowledgeable than him? I said, no. So what are you doing? Because she, I said, no, 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 no. Don't justify. Tell me. Do you know more than him? She said, no. Said, then, she said, I'm wrong. What are you going to do? So this is how we take it step by step. Him confessing, convinced that he's doing wrong and that he's obeying shaitan. End of story. It's interesting because uh, it's, you know, you say you haven't studied psychology and stuff, but actually the method that you're using there um, is, is very similar to what um, somebody who has studied it would use, which is to kind of like ask, ask the questions for the person to come to their own conclusion. As I said, I, I have no idea what they do, but I know that with experience, with trial and errors, and with the grace of Allah, of course, above all, people do see where they're going wrong. And the moment you manage to tell a patient about their illness, this is half of the cure. Mm -hmm. The other half is in your hands. And within like most of counseling sessions, by the way, finish by 15, 17 minutes. The guy says, done. I said, okay, you have 15 minutes to go. I said, Zakallah khair, nothing to, nothing to add. I said, are we good? I said, yeah, perfect. So this time is, is free. You're not going to get a refund. <laughs> I said, no, I don't want any. Yani, alhamdulillah, astonishingly, a lot of the brothers come after a while and say, Sheikh, I'm sp uh, sponsoring 10 sessions for the sake of Allah. I benefited a lot. Subhanallah. He used the money. money. Okay, this is good for the down payment of my boat. Hmm. Keep up the good work. Okay, so you said um, a, a big part of it is um, OCD as well. Correct. Uh, what other um, are, what other things are kind of common that come up? So we got marriage, OCD. Has that kind of the big ones? Yeah, uh, marriage, divorce issues. Uh, did the divorce take place or not? Especially from the subcontinent, the free divorce issue. The Hanafi say, it's done. So people come to me. Sheikh, my husband was enraged and said, talak, talak, talak. Immediately, any Hanafi scholar said, you're done, you need halala. You have to get married again to another man and then live with him and then div get divorced in order to go back to your first husband. And this is not the real fatwa that is applicable. You can't just destroy people's marriages just like that. So they come to me. Uh, people have problems with hurmat al-musahar, which is also another uh, thing famously widely spread in the subcontinent and not found anywhere else. If a man is thinking uh, um, sexually about his daughter-in-law or touches her inappropriately, the marriage is dissolved. Who said this? What is this? This is ridiculous even. So they come to me with similar questions, problems with the kids, especially those living in North America or in Europe. My son is coming out of the closet and he says he's homosexual. My daughter is declaring that she's lesbian and she's living with her girlfriend. What should we do? How to, to act? Apostasy and the likes. So they come asking for um, how to resolve problems with the father who beats them up, who doesn't uh, provide for them, what should be the relationship be like, and the likes. So I try to give them advice from an Islam perspective, from the pros and cons, the consequences. Should I file for divorce from my husband? He mistreats me, he beats me, he does this, he does that. Says, okay, what are your choices on the table? You're going to be kicked out, you divorce him, then what? Work as a prostitute? Nobody's to, to provide for you. Your family doesn't want you. Think of the consequences. So, Yanni, the lies. Okay, it's a deep, deep topic. Um, what's your take on um, stress? Because uh, I, I'm already thinking that you kind of uh, yourself had... Uh, have worked your um, own personality to improve at managing stress. True. So um, kind of, I guess, like, what's that journey like and how can one improve uh, managing stress? Because I heard this quote about stress, which I think is so true. And it said that um, stress, it um, first makes a person ugly and then it kills them. When you're stressed, 
whether it's because jealousy, because of someone bullying you, because of the fear of the future and what it may hold, because a job you lost, because of debts you have to pay off, because of rent, because of a nagging wife, because of a disobedient uh, child, if you have trust in Allah, if you know what is the meaning of the name Al-Wakil, when we say Hasbun Allah, Wa Ni'ma Al-Wakil, what does Al-Wakil mean? When you trust Allah, depend on Him, and totally rely on Him, you live a stressless life because everything is in hands. So why are you worried? When Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was destined to be executed by being thrown in the inferno, in this huge fire that they built for him. He just said, Allah will suffice us, and he is the one we trust and rely upon. Boom, end of story. You're, just, you're going to be fried and cooked and grilled. No problem. Allah is my protector. So when you have this concept, there's no stress in life. Life goes up and down. And whenever the, the, the night is the darkest, dawn is close by. So trust Allah. You have no stress at all. Sometimes it feels hard, more difficult to implement than... Um, it feels a bit more difficult to implement, right? But what you're saying, I think, is still obviously... Uh, you have no choice. Susan, yeah. Again, you lost your son. May Allah protect all of your children. You lost your son. What are you going to do? Bang your head against the wall? You're going to break the wall, but your son is still going to be dead. So why the stress? It's gone. Allah Azza wa preordained it. Be content and move on and you will find that Allah will fill your heart with peace and tranquility. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. We got uh, a couple of minutes left, so I'm going to shoot you a few words, uh, and I want you to respond with uh, a word. Well, it could be a few words if you if you can't respond in a word, but the point is, there's very very short. Uh, I'm going to give you ten words in short, okay? Or we'll, we'll a couple of words. Uh, social media. Double edge blade. Marriage. Blessing. Music. Beautiful but haram. Debt. Burden during the night and humility during the day. Ra uh, overthinking. OCD. Raising children. A challenge that you need Allah's help and without it, you're lost. Coffee. Tea. You prefer tea? No. <laughs> it's just, just a word. Hey, I, 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 don't I don't have any preference of it. Uh, do you drink coffee? I drink coffee, but only to help my heart, not that I love it. Oh, okay. Uh, only when I travel out of the kingdom is that I go for cappuccino. I used to because I'm a Salafi. Now, alhamdulillah, I've become moderate Salafi, so I go for uh, latte nice. because the foam is less. It's more milk. Yeah, it's less foam. Yes. yes. The foam is, is it's a problem. Yeah, foam is a problem with cappuccino. Yeah. You should, you should do a cortado, Sheikh. I don't, I don't know. know. This, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need another Five 10 years. years. Okay. Uh, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma sallam alayhi The love of my life. Uh, favorite uh, Quran reciter? Um, I, I, I love them all. Minshawi, because I don't have a cassette or a CD. Cassette, I know you're too young for cassettes. No, no, I'm a cassette. Okay, alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have something that I play on. We have, alhamdulillah, Allah graced us with the uh, channel of Quran okay, 24-7. So I just listened to it to the radio. Minshawi would be the best. But if I were to listen to something that I would be moved by, I go with Sheikh Tawfiq al -Sayr. It's interesting because you seem to have this common, the excuse me, is a common thread in this conversation where you, I don't know whether you'd class yourself as, as you or not, but you seem, you seem to be a minimalist. And it's interesting now in this day and age where people are, the, the norm is for us to gather things and buy things and is very materialistic. Uh, how can a person remain minimal? And this is your final question, Sheikh. Uh, I'm I'm happy with whatever Allah gives me. So, 
يعني why so people ask me would you like to buy a new car I said no I, I have a car that takes me from point A to B maybe if 30 years ago I would have given you a list of the cars that I really want to buy and own nowadays I'm, I'm content I remember 10 years ago I was in Dubai and Sheikh Dr. Zakir Naik called me and said Sheikh Hassan what about going to uh, do some test drive I have a friend who has a dealership of exotic cars and he set up like 30 cars you know Bugattis, Chiron's, uh, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, uh, Porsches and we just go and test drive it in, in, in the uh, circuit so mm, not interested oh. he said Sheikh why I know you love cars I said yeah I know all about these cars but I can't afford it, so I'm not interested. So I'm I'm content with what I have with the grace of Allah. Sheikh Najazakhir, thank you for your time. Honestly, I really appreciate it. It's an honor to um, have you on our podcast. May Allah bless you. Thank you for your time. Jazakallahu khairan for flying all the way to Saudi to honor me with this. Though I think you've wasted a lot of your time and the viewers' time. You should have done this with someone who is worthwhile. But Jazakallahu khair for uh, the invitation and may Allah Azza wa make my deeds and yours sincere for his sake. I mean, what a graphic. Assalamu alaikum.